Hey YouTubers, it's Crafty Carter here. I have a new project to share with you guys. My local hackerspace, Freeside Atlanta, asked me to create a uh, circuit to operate their electronic uh, door system. Uh, the system works by using a large plunger on the inside to unlock the door and RFIDs on the outside to unlock the door. And you uh, push the button and the door should be unlocked for a certain period of time and I believe uh, fire restrictions say 30 seconds. Um, so they just sort of said make the circuit for us to operate the door. That sort of gave me an open uh, slate to think about how I might want to do it and there are a couple of ways. Uh, I could have done it with a microcontroller like an at tiny 45 or at tiny 13 something like that which would have been uh, easy to easy to work with but it would have required that uh, that you flash firmware before it would work, which is sort of uh, an irritating thing to do when you just want to hand over a thing and let people use it. And uh, another way would be to go all analog. Um, and the third way would be to go with a hybrid circuit. And that's what I chose to do. And I ended up putting it together with a 555 timer. And uh, it's set up in a one-shot configuration. What that does is when you uh, close the uh, operation circuit, or uh, pull it to ground, as it were, so actually open that circuit, it uh, does it what's called a one-shot. And what that means is that it takes the opportunity to uh, turn on the output to one diode drill below the input power until the uh, sense pin that gets that senses the voltage that's connected to a large capacitor fills up and goes high and once that happens it shuts off again and the length of time that that thing uh, the output pin pin 3 on the 5 by 5 is high is determined by the size of the capacitor and the size of the resistor with which that capacitor is filled now we needed a 30 second system, so I think I went with a 470 microfarad cap and uh, be a 57k resistor. I have to check the color codes on these, but the timing is right, and I've adjusted it for this demonstration just to make it a little bit shorter. I put a 10k resistor in there, so um, assuming this function is linear, which I don't know that is true. Um, should be one fifth the time, and if it's 30 seconds, it should be about six seconds. We can test that right now. Turn it on, hit the button. This is, uh, there are two FETs in the circuit, so, because uh, they wanted it to be able to be used with uh, either you push the button to turn on a circuit or you push the button to turn off a circuit. Uh, the door is a push the button to turn off the circuit, because the uh, door is an electromagnet it needs to be hot in order to stay locked. So um, in that case, the fire go or the electricity goes out, you aren't locked in. Um, but anyway, uh, so we'll push the button here, and what I do is I have since I have two uh, FETs, it operates either one circuit or the other since they aren't on at the same time. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. So it's a linear circuit, because it was 30 seconds, and I divided the uh, resistor uh, by 5, and we get uh, one-fifth of the time. So that makes sense, since uh, the nature of that should be linear, because all that algebra is linear. So that's very cool. Uh, so let's take a look at the circuit. Well, I'll describe it in, uh, briefly first. Uh, so the 555 has the, an output pin that goes high. Well, like I said, one diode drop below uh, input power, which is at 12 volts, so it goes to about 11 and a half volts. And that's great. Uh, it's a high impedance signal, which is actually too high to drive the capacitance of a power FET. So I had to run that through an op amp in order to get a low impedance drive signal for the uh, FET gate. And that means when you push the button, it, the output pin drives the op amp which drives this FET which turns on that light. But how do we get this running and then shut off? Well to do that I have another op amp 
And instead of being set up as a simple voltage follower like the last one I described, this one's set up as a comparator. So when the output is low uh, from the output pin on the 555, the uh, output of the op amp is high. And what I do is I have a simple voltage divider which is set to half that voltage as the um, non-inverting input of the op amp. And the inverting input of the op amp is the output pin from the 555. So when it's low, the op amp is high, hence the light is on because it's driving the gate of the MOSFET. And when it goes high, uh, the comparator flops and then it drives the output of the op amp low, which turns off the uh, FET that drives this light. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'll give you a close-up of the uh, circuit here in just a second. And we'll call this video done. So here is the extreme close-up of this circuit. On the right you can see two uh, TO220 packages. Those are the power MOSFETs. The uh, green wires attached to the tab, which is the drain, uh, go to the loads, and I'm doing low side switching, so I open a path to ground when I turn the gates high. On the bottom, you can see the big can. Those, are, that's the uh, 470 UF uh, capacitor that gets uh, filled up, and when it fills up, it tells the uh, 555 to shut down. You can see the resistor there too. It's just a small guy, which is why it operates so fast. And then this is the output wire from the 555 that goes to the dual op amp package here. And this side is the comparator with the 50% uh, 50-50 uh, voltage divider in circuit. And then this guy is the uh, voltage follower configuration. You can see the little uh, link there where I'm connecting the output to the inverting input. And uh, then the button, all it does is it uh, pulls low the uh, trigger pin on the 555, which makes the magic happen.